Before starting the lesson, try this warm-up question. Determine all four unknown angles. So, just to be clear, those angles are this one, this one, this one, and this one. So pause the video, try the question, and then check back in to see how you do. I started with this angle. It's inside a triangle, and I know that all the angles inside a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if I have a 35 degree angle and a 10 degree angle, that's a total of 45 degrees. I need 135 degrees more to get my total of 180 degrees. And then to find this angle, I know that it's on a straight line with this angle. A straight line is 180 degrees, so I know this has to be 45 degrees so that the entire angle is 180 on the straight line. This angle is the same as this angle because I have parallel lines with a transversal in between, and I see that there's a Z pattern. I have alternate angles here and here. So they're both the same. That's how I know this is 35 degrees. And then again, inside my triangle, the total has to be 180 degrees. So 70 plus 35, that's 105 degrees. I have 75 degrees left over. And that leads into this lesson, angles in triangles. The first angle property of triangles that we're going to look at is one that you already know. It's the sum of the interior angles. So here I have a triangle with the angles labeled as A, B, and C. And like in the warm-up, I already know that the interior angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So the rule is A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees. Now the next angle property of triangles that we're going to look at is the property of exterior angles. So here I have that same triangle. I have two angles labeled A and B. Those are inside the interior angles. And then I have this exterior angle on the opposite side of the triangle. Now an exterior angle is the angle between the side of the triangle and the extension of another side of the triangle. So that angle there, that external angle, happens to equal the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So we would write that as A plus B equals X. Now to explain that, here's proof. I already know that A plus B plus C are my interior angles and they have to add up to 180 degrees. And I also know that because angle C and angle X are on a straight line, they have to add up to 180 degrees as well. So when I put those two together, A plus B plus C is equal to 180, X plus C is equal to 180. If they're both equal to the same thing, they're both equal to 180, that means they're equal to each other. So I can write A plus B plus C is equal to X plus C. Now, I have C on both sides, so really those cancel each other out. We're left with A plus B equals X. So here's the algebraic proof of this rule right here. The sum of the two interior angles is equal to the opposite exterior angle. And the last property of angles in triangles we're going to look at is the sum of the exterior angles. So here I'm extending all the sides of a triangle to see the exterior angles. Now this only works if I have my exterior angles in kind of a saw blade pattern where they're all going in the same direction. But here I'm labeling my exterior angles as X, Y, and Z. So the sum of the exterior angles, X plus Y plus Z, happens to equal 360 degrees. 
So that's the rule. Now, I want to also provide proof. So here's some proof. But first, before I give the proof, I want to talk about something first. This exterior angle, x, is on a straight line with this interior angle, c. So I know that to calculate angle x, I would have to take 180 and subtract c. So I know that x is 180 minus c. I can do the same thing up here for angle y. It's on a straight line with angle a. So to calculate angle y, it's 180 minus a. Angle z is 180 minus b because it's on a straight line with b. So the sum of the exterior angles is x plus y plus z. Well, I know that x is 180 minus c, y is 180 minus a, and z is 180 minus b. So I can replace x, y, and z with those values. And then I can kind of collect like terms, as it were, and have the expression 180 plus 180 plus 180 minus a minus b minus c. Now this a, b, and c, we've seen that in the previous slide. We know that's the sum of the interior angles. A and B and C together are 180. So if we're subtracting all of them, that means we're subtracting 180. So now we have 180 plus 180 plus 180 minus 180. We do all that math together, we end up with 360 degrees. And it, so it doesn't matter what A, B, and C are, because no matter how you do it, it always works out to 360 degrees. So now we can start doing some examples where we're using these properties of angles and triangles to find missing angles. So for example, one, we want to determine the angle measure indicated. So this angle here is the one that we're trying to find. Now that symbol there, that's a Greek letter, alpha. It's a lowercase alpha. And this example just uses that symbol to represent this angle. But that's the angle we want to find. So look at the different angle properties that I've shown you previous to this and try to figure out how to, how to, to determine this missing angle. Pause the video, try it, and then check back in to see how you do. I used the angle property where the two interior angles add together to get the opposite exterior angle. So alpha is equal to 42 plus 67. Angle Z plus angle W. So when I add those together, I get 109 degrees. So this angle alpha is 109 degrees. We'll do the same thing for this question. We want to determine the missing angles. So here we have angle X and angle Y. Notice that this triangle is isosceles. These two sides are the same length, but not the same length as the third side. So see if you can figure out what to do here. Uh, it might be a little more complicated than the last one, but use all the knowledge you have about angles and triangles to see if you can figure out what angle X is and what angle Y is. Pause the video, see how you do. I started by looking at this angle here. It's on a straight line with the 110 degree angle, so I know they have to add up to 180 degrees. So this angle, which I've labeled as A, is equal to 70 degrees. This angle is the same angle because it's an isosceles triangle, which means B has to be 40 degrees because these three angles have to add up to 180. That's what I did here. So now that I have all the interior angles, I can start to figure out my missing exterior angles. So I know angle X is on a straight line with what I've labeled as angle B, which was 40 degrees. So that means x has to be 140 degrees. 
I also know that all three exterior angles have to add up to 360 degrees. Knowing that x is 140 degrees, I can plug that into my equation and I can solve to get y is 110 degrees. Now you could have solved this a couple different ways, but you should end up with the same answers for your angles. And as long as you can explain your steps and prove that what you're doing is true, then you should be fine. Here's the last example. So again, just pause the video and try to figure out what these three angles are. Notice that we have parallel lines here, so that might come in handy. So pause the video, try it, and then check back in to see how you do. So the way I solved this was I first noticed that with my parallel lines, I have a Z pattern here, which means that X and 40 degrees are alternate angles. They are equal to each other, so I know X is equal to 40 degrees. To find angle Y, first I find this angle here, knowing that it's on a straight line with this exterior angle, they have to add to 180 degrees. Well, if this is 100 degrees, that means this has to be 80 degrees here to get a total of 180 degrees. So because this is 80 degrees and this is 40 degrees and my three interior angles have to add up to 180, I know that Y is 60 degrees. And lastly, angle Y and angle Z are on a straight line, which means they have to add up to 180 degrees. Y is 60 degrees, so that means Z has to be 120 degrees in order for them to add to 180 degrees. So that's how I got my answer for angle Z. So the whole point of this lesson was to introduce you to a few properties of angles with triangles but I used some other angle properties as well. For example, parallel line theorem. You have to use all that you know about angles in order to figure out certain problems. And that'll help you in a lot of geometry problems. If you have any questions or issues with this lesson material, let me know and I can help. Otherwise, move on to the practice questions.